Hi, and welcome to the membrane portion of our matter unit. The next two videos are going to look at the structure and function of membranes in cellular systems. And I'm going to start with a magic trick. Before you, you see a common household everyday egg, but voila, the shell is removed and underneath that shell, you can see a membrane holds the egg together. And that's what we're going to be talking about for these next two videos. The question that we're going to be trying to answer here is how do living things separate their inside from their outside? This may seem obvious to you, but it's incredibly important for living things to be able to accomplish that separation. And membranes are the way in which they do that. In this video, we're going to be talking about the structure of the cell membrane, and we'll talk briefly about the structure of cell walls. So let's go in. Membranes are absolutely universal in living systems. All cellular systems are surrounded by cell membranes. They are a requirement for life. We first talked about membrane structure when we talked about phospholipids back in our lipid discussion, but just as a reminder, here is our cell membrane. This is what it looks like enlarged a little bit. Let's enlarge it further, and we can see that we've got a structure that looks like this. We're now gonna go in and talk in detail about each of the elements that you see in this image. The main ingredient of cell membranes are phospholipids. Just as a reminder, phospholipids are a type of lipid with a hydrophilic phosphate head on one end and hydrophobic phosphate tails on the other end. They are amphipathic molecules. They're both polar and nonpolar. When we put the phospholipids together, they'll spontaneously form a bilayer with the phosphate heads pointing outward and the fatty acid tails pointing inward towards each other. It's a bilayer because there's two different layers of phospholipids oriented into the stable structure that you see in this image. But of course, the cell membrane is not just phospholipids. There are a bunch of other parts that are put together in order to make the functional cell membrane. And so the overall model of the cell membrane is referred to as the fluid mosaic model. Fluid meaning everything in the cell membrane is fluid within the plane of the membrane. Structures in the membrane can move around inside of the bilayer. And it's a mosaic because it is a structure that's composed out of many different individual subcomponents. You probably noticed the big blue things floating in the membrane. These are in fact embedded membrane proteins. There are a variety of different proteins that would be embedded inside of a membrane and they serve different roles. We're not really gonna to talk too much about the roles that those proteins play right now. We're just going to classify them based upon their relationship to the membrane. Proteins that are associated with one side of the bilayer are referred to as peripheral proteins, and proteins that go through both layers of the bilayer are referred to as integral proteins. These proteins play a variety of different roles inside of the cell, but this image is spotlighting one particular role played by this type of integral protein, which is a channel protein allowing substances to move from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane. Outside of the phospholipids and proteins in the membrane, we have other structures as well. We get structures referred to as glycolipids and glycoproteins. That prefix glyco refers to sugars, and these are small groups of bonded sugars, what are referred to as oligosaccharides, that are then attached either to lipids in the case of glycolipids or proteins in the case of glycoproteins. And these serve a variety of functions for the cell. One of the major functions in us is that they help each cell in our body identify itself as actually being part of our body and not some foreign invading cell, which would have different structures to its glycolipids or its glycoprotein. We also have cytoskeletal elements. The cytoskeleton is a network of structural proteins that extend throughout the entirety of the cell cytoplasm and serve as an anchoring place for organelles and other internal components. The cytoskeleton is also attached to the cell membrane in many different places. And last but not least, we of course have cholesterol molecules inside of the bilayer. We talked in depth about their function as a temperature buffer when we talked about lipid structure and function in our lipids and carbohydrates video. If you need a refresher for that, you should definitely go back and check it out because we are not going to repeat ourselves here. It's important to understand that cell membranes are another example of this phenomenon of emergence that we see in biological systems. The functions of the cell membrane emerge from the combination of all the different elements of the cell membrane all put together and functioning together as an integrated whole. If we removed any one type of these structures from the cell membrane, the cell membrane would not function anymore and the cell would die as a result. Unlike cell membranes, cell walls are an optional structure. I mean, it's not optional for the type of cell that has them. They have to. What I mean by this is that there are groups of cells that do not have cell walls, unlike cell membranes, which every cell has. Specifically, plant-like eukaryotes, fungal cells, which I'm not showing here, and prokaryotes all have cell walls. Animal-like cells, like our cells, do not have cell walls. 
Unlike the cell membrane, which plays a major role in the transport function, the function of cell walls is limited strictly to maintaining the structure of the cell. This is why plants and bacteria have them, because they really don't have any other structural supports. Animals, on the other hand, have skeletal systems that they've developed in order to maintain their internal structures, and so cell walls are just not required for animals, whereas they are required for other types of organisms. The particular components of cell walls vary among plants, fungi, and bacteria, but in each case they're made out of different types of polysaccharides, and of course, in plant-like cells, they're made out of fibers of cellulose. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of cell membrane structure and cell walls. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can describe the fluid mosaic model of cell membrane structure. Make sure you can explain the role of each component of the cell membrane and the overall functions of the membrane. And finally, make sure you can contrast cell membranes with cell walls. If you can do all those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.